are live. Believe Nation, happy Monday. Monday is my mentoring day, so I spend today mentoring the people on my team. Uh, I think if you are an entrepreneur, you've got a big mission, big dream, big goals, recognizing that you can't do this alone, and as soon as you can, you get people on your team to help support, guide, mentor, etc. Uh, really, really, really matters. But as my break today, we're going to do our IG Live, 2 o'clock Eastern, and I've got a special guest who I think you're going to love. Let's see if I can find him in here. Where is he? Has he joined yet? Mr. Barry, 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 Barry. Welcome, everybody. Happy Monday. Hope you're having a great start to your week. Barry, if you're there. Oh, there he is. Perfect. All right. We're going to be You guys are going to love this conversation. I'm excited. And there he is. Evan, how are you? Good. Oh, hold on. Here we go. Are we back? We're back. Then we're back. All right, good. Hey, guys. Uh, Barry and I connected Inside Genius Network, uh, which is an awesome group for entrepreneurs trying to get to the next level. And he did this great 10 minute talk about the impact of music. And I love music. I have multiple playlists for different vibes. I was asked yesterday. In your morning routine, what is the most important thing that, that has to be there? I said music. Every awesome. time, it's got to be music. So walk us through, Barry. I mean, I've heard the overview, but for, for my audience, and I want to, I got some specific questions I want to ask you. The, the power of music and why people need to have it in their, as a part of not just their morning routine, but regular daily routine. Yeah, I think, well, most of us think we know, like, everything about music, but it, it's really about looking at it from another way. And beyond art and entertainment, how you can use music to navigate your emotions for whatever it is you want your purpose to be. So, you know, like, like I love your book is all about perfect, um, you know, your purpose and believing in what you want to do and putting that out into the world. But how do we manage our energy to be able to do that effectively? So if you think of music more as a tool to navigate your emotions more effectively, as opposed to just art and entertainment, and not just creating playlists you know, that we love, but what would happen if we created them for different emotions so that when our energy is down, right, and we want to lift it up, we know exactly what piece we're going to play. We have a playlist that's ready for that. Or the other way around, you know, in the evening when you want to wind down at night because your mind's so busy and you can't get to sleep, having a playlist to be able to do that. And it's really about bridging. Where am I now? Where do I want to go? And what piece of music is going to take me there? I love it. So I love to say music is the fastest way to change your state. You know, no matter how you feel, and music is the fastest way to get out into a different state. I think too often we put on music for how we're currently feeling. So if you feel really sad, you put on sad music. And then what does that do? It just keeps you feeling sad as opposed to saying, hey, listen, maybe, maybe you should feel sad. Like maybe something happened that is worth feeling sad over. But if you want to be happy, don't put on sad music. It's just going to keep you where you are. So... Okay, so you, you in the presentation were talking about you had you know morning playlist, you had an after uh, lunchtime or afternoon playlist that was more uh, tropical vibe or touring the world kind of vibe, and then the evening playlist. It does it start with how do I want if I'm putting this into a morning routine? Is it how do I want to feel today? And then what songs make me feel that way? It's like, is that how you help people build playlists? Yeah, or even looking at your schedule for the day, I'm sure you know what you're going to do during your day. So, if, yeah. you know, if you, if you have a big leadership meeting or a high energy interview, you don't want to start your day listening to relaxation music. You know, so I think it, it's knowing yourself, inventorying your music and knowing what pieces take you where is a great start. But we also, you know, the, the science behind it, Evan, as well, that, um, when we start our day in a place of gratitude, that we can just build on that. So the Institute of Heart Math actually shows that when we're in these states of gratitude, appreciation, compassion, that it's not just affecting our emotions, but it's affecting our physical body as well. So our hearts, when we're in that place of gratitude, start beating at smooth, orderly rhythms. And also, it slows our brainwaves down to alpha brainwave states as well when we're in that. And that's the perfect state to create in. So if you start your day in a place of gratitude, it doesn't have to just be relaxation music, though, either within that gratitude playlist. Like, my playlist is awesome. It has, like, Sly and the Family Stone. Thank you for letting me be myself. Right? Dido, thank you. Louis Armstrong, what a wonderful world. 
So you kind of see where I'm going with this, you know, and that puts me in a place of appreciation to start my day. And then I just kind of amp it up from there or wind it down from there based on what I need during my day. Do, do you intentionally pair that with something, some kind of activity? Or is it just, it's on as you're going throughout your day? So example, like, are you doing it while you're meditating or while you're going for a walk or while you're brushing your teeth? Or is it just, hey, I'm, I'm doing my usual, I'm checking the phone, whatever, but I've got this on in the background, which helps me remember. Yeah, I mean, sometimes it's a little of both. It's based on what I need in that day. You know, so I can start off listening to Sly and the Family Stone. Thank you for letting me be myself. But then if I want to set my intention for my day and move more into my heart with that, you know, then I listen to a, a piece of music that's going to bring me into more into that expansive space of gratitude where I'm feeling more emotion. I would in, listen more intently at that phase of it. So it's, um, you know, it, it reminds me of, I think, what, what was said. If you, if you give a man a fish, he eats for a day. If you teach a man to fish, he eats for a lifetime. So it's really not me saying, okay, here's what to plug in. It's you knowing what takes you to each state and identifying that so that when you reach that state, you know how to get there. And sometimes you're right. It is moving. It, sometimes it is acknowledging the emotion first. You know, if you're sad, sometimes you want to move through that emotion. But also, how long do you want to stay there? You know, you don't want to move it into a pity party, but you do want to process the emotion. And I think most of us, you know, are in this day and age, or a lot of us are geared towards looking for a panacea or a way to numb things as well. So it's important to recognize the emotion and then move through it and elevate it. So identify it, release it, and then do what I do. I call it attuning. So once you identify and release, then you can attune. I like it. So I, I've, it just intuitively felt like music was fantastic and it really helped me, but I never had any of the science or data or anything behind it. So it was, I was super excited when you came on and did your presentation and to have you on here too. Um, talk to me about, sometimes I'll have my playlist that I just go through and I have a, I have a Believe playlist, which, which I have on during the day or my productivity music playlist. But there are also, also sometimes like right now for the past eight days probably, I've just had one song on repeat. Uh-huh, yeah. Uh, Selena Gomez, My Dilemma. Uh, and I don't know, it's the beat, there's just something to it, and just on repeat, like while I'm working, while I muted it for this, so this yeah, is yeah. crazy out of the background, but I found that I'll get into zones where there's just one song that I have and, and for a day or for days, and I probably drive the people around me, Nina and my wife, probably has <laughs> patience, like, are we still listening to this song? Talk to us about that, where it becomes this earworm that we just have to keep on. Is that is it good to stay in that zone? How does it serve us or not serve us? What are your thoughts? Yeah, well, how does it make you feel when you listen to it would be my first question. Um, I find that when I, when I first put it on, I was like, oh, I can't wait. The song is still in my head for some reason. You know, I guess probably because I listened to it all day yesterday. It's still in my head. It still makes me feel great. Uh, it's got a nice beat to it. So I'm on my trampoline jumping while I'm working. But then at some point it kind of just fades into the background, but I'm still jumping. I think it goes subconscious, you know, that I'm not actively paying attention to the music anymore, but I still have the beat and the energy from the song that I'm now pouring into the work. And, you know, five hours goes by and the song's still on repeat. I don't even notice that the song is still on. It's just kind of there. That's great. But I still have the, the energy and, and jumping up and down to the beat. Yeah, so there's a couple of things in there. That's why I asked you. First of all, I think it's great to have one song. I call that your happy song. So no matter what you're doing, you know, it kind of puts you in a state that you want to, whether it's happy or whether it's for creativity. You can have one song that you sink your teeth into. And we change, you know, on a daily basis. Our energy, our emotions change. So as long as you feel it's still serving you and it's getting you to where you want to go, I say utilize it. But also what's going on, it's creating what, uh, is, has been researched as autobiographical memories. So music has the power, as you know, you can listen to a song from 30 years ago and say, wow, that used to be my jam. I love that song. And it's still, even listening to it to this day, makes me feel a certain way. So what you're doing with that is you're creating a new autobiographical memory with that song because now you're connecting that to putting you in a creative state, in a flow state. And not only that, the aspect of it of you moving into rhythm with it is what's called entrainment. So entrainment is when 
an internal rhythm can synchronize to an external rhythm. So your heart rate can actually synchronize to a piece of music. And we can target different states by doing that. For example, relaxation could be at 60 beats per minute. That Selena Gomez song, probably in the, you know, between 70 and 80 beats, that kind of real central vibe and it kind of has a beat to it and, you know, can keep you right there. So we're really what I call, and you probably remember this from my talk, you're becoming the DJ of your life, right? Just like DJs program beats, they know how many beats per minute a song is. They're navigating their audience's energy. You're navigating your own energy to put you in a place of service. And that's awesome. One of the things I love doing that people find crazy is I play pretty much every song at 1.25 speed. Wow. Okay. So you speed it up a little bit. So by deep, because YouTube has a setting where you can go, I, I basically do everything on YouTube. If I use the YouTube app, the music app, you can't adjust the speed. So like, why is everything so slow? But pretty much every single song I play at 1.25 speed and then I'll, I'll play it for people and then I'll play them the original ones. Like, wow, it sounds so slow. I think it's just more happy. I don't know. It makes it gives me more energy. Maybe it's the whole heartbeat rhythm. You know, I want to be beaten at a faster rate. <laughs> it, 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 does anything come to mind where I say that like every single song pretty much, unless it's like a, just a crazy, crazy fast song, but for the most part, every song. Yeah, I mean, I think, it's, I think you have an awareness of what works for you. And that's the first thing I always tell people to do is, is not just go by recommendations, do what feels good for you. And if you have an awareness that you want to move it a little bit faster, you probably want to get a lot done. You know, you, you, you seem like you want to, you know, there's a lot you want to do in your lifetime. And that if you just go a little bit faster, you can probably get more done and, you know, move through different states um, and target those states. That's what came to, to me in terms of doing it. But what I want to say is, you know, this is all an experiment as well. You know, for me, I started off as a pop producer, you know, in New York City. I grew up in the Bronx. I was like producing urban music and I was doing uh, a lot of club and house music at the beginning of that. And I was, became very stressed out as being a music producer in New York City and started losing my love for music. So I said, wow, how can I come back to the, my heart and my love of this and stop working on a four minute song for a hundred hours a day. And instead, what would happen if I just let the music kind of come through me and I set my metronome to 60 beats per minute. So I was my own experiment to move through anxiety and stress. I didn't think, you know, 30 years later now that I would be proud to say I'm putting people to sleep, you know, all around the world with my music. So, it is an experiment constantly because you're constantly changing. But knowing that music doesn't just affect you physically, but mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and physically. And that's why it's so powerful. And when you can start to plug that into your day to navigate your mission and your vision, that's the difference. So I love what you're saying. Why, why Wayne, one of the reasons why I love it is because I've been doing it intuitively, but never had a, a map to follow. It's just been exploration, but no map, no guidance, no like best practices or anything to follow. The first thing that comes to my head is if I take the Selena Gomez song, for example, if I take the earworm songs that have been, you know, the ones that I've had on repeat for days for sometimes, and then whatever the BPM is times 1.25, like maybe that's an ideal, maybe instead of just playing every song at 1.25, I should be optimizing for 80 beats per minute. Right. So that would be the first thing. I agree. You can recognize and identify what the beats per minute for that is. And there's some great apps that do that. Like I have an app in my phone called BPM. Yeah. So whenever I have a song that I listen to and I like, I'm com you know, com going like this in the BPM to see what that is and identify it. I was like, ah, I thought so. Cause I'm, I'm pretty good at it, you know, and saying, Oh, that's about 60 beats per minute. That's 73 beats per minute. But um, I think it's great to have an app where you can do it and, and start targeting your states. Because when you're, you're moving into those states, Evan, as well, your body is amazing, right? You're starting to produce hormones that are beneficial to you doing whatever you need to do. So when you're feeling like you're rewarding yourself by listening to a piece of music, your body starts to produce dopamine, which is a pleasure hormone. And it's, it's, it starts to diminish your um, stress hormones, cortisol. So, so many people who are reaching um, for pharmaceuticals and nutraceuticals, 
you know, and I understand that. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not putting anyone down. People need to do what they need to do, and there's no right or wrong. But why not have a third category, which I call acousticeuticals, right, where you're tapping into music. Try it first. Low cost, non-invasive, no side effects, and see if that works for you. And you can work with navigating your energy with, you know, in combination or, you know, finding harmony in another way. I love it, dude. So I'm speaking at an event, my first like in-person event coming up, uh, you know, through COVID. And they asked me, hey, what do you want your walk-on song to be? And I say, Sia, Unstoppable, because that's, that been, that's been my walk-on song. But Sia, Unstoppable, right where the beat drops, but at 1.25 speed. Yeah, or you need me to write like a theme song for you, man, like tailored for you when you walk out on that stage. We, we could do that too. I, li I yeah. like where you're going. Yeah. But yeah. My question there around that is, when I first heard you talk, my, my initial thoughts went, okay, I need to have different playlists for different moods, morning, evening, afternoon, or even just on breaks, or even just, hey, if I want to be more mindful now, or more creative now, or more whatever now, then I need to, having music to help me get me there, will get, because that can happen. There are yes. some songs you put on, and like, I have to That's get it. up and just start moving. Like, it That's doesn't right. have to take 20 minutes of meditation with, with your acousto Therapy? Acousticeuticals, yeah. Acousticeuticals. But you're right. That's the point. Acousti yeah, exactly. It happens. It happens fast. It happens fast. Yeah. So, my first insight from your first talk was find different songs for different BPMs that can match the mood I want to go after. What I'm wondering now is the impact of just instead of finding a song, what if we find songs that that we know and like, but then just alter the speed. Yeah, that's cool also. Why not? Yeah, I mean, you have the technology to do it, you know, but w what happens if you want to slow it down? You know, you can, you can do that all, as well. There's apps to do all of that. Is there, is there an easy way? I'm going to loop my laptop now. I'm taking notes here. <laughs> is, there, is there an easy way to, to put a song to a certain BPM? I, I'm, I think there is an app for that, but you probably would want to type in, you know, shifting uh, speed shift. I know there, there is in my software, but I don't know if there's an easy app to do that. You know, it's like in Pro Tools, I can do okay. that fairly easily and just change beat, beats per minute of it. But I, I, I would think with all the apps that we have out there, that there'd be a way to do that. If not, maybe it's time to create one. So, yeah. Dude, this is the next Barry and Creative. Barry and Evan, create it. Yeah, let's do it. service. Give, us, give me your favorite songs. And then it could even be the same song. I wonder if, I wonder if Selena Gomez could put me to sleep. I wonder, like, I wonder if, if we slowed it down to 65, does it have the same impact? Yeah, well, here's the other thing with sleep music, though. Uh, I, and I will say this. Like, again, not that there's any right and wrong, but lyrics tend to put us more back into our thinking mind. You know, when we're listening to songs with, with words in them before sleep, we tend to get caught up in the lyric and like, oh, I love this lyric or I don't. And that keeps our, you know, our analytical brain, you know, in, ter in terms of wanting to move into a more trance state, it's putting you back into the analytical mind. So music for sleep, you might want to use that to bridge into more of a sleep state. And that, again, is it when it comes to beats per minute. Like if you're in your high thinking mind all day, you know, probably you're in beta brainwave state, which is your analytical mind that's doing all this, you probably want to bridge yourself down and maybe you start off with, you know, an up-tempo club jam or, you know, that's more, that's faster. And then you keep bridging down. So meet yourself where you're at. Again, asking yourself, where am I now? Where do I want to go? What's going to take me there? And create a playlist that's going to bridge you down to sleep as opposed to just drastically taking you from one state to the other. So that's interesting. So auditory is the worst way for me to learn. Like I'll zone out on audiobooks. Hearing really sucks for me uh, compared to visual. Like the fact that I can see you versus it just being a audio only podcast is so much easier. Yes. I zone out of almost all lyrics. Like I don't even know what they're saying. Um, my son just remembers and like, how do you remember the song? Even as I'm singing songs, because I've heard it so many times, I don't even know what I'm saying. If you ask me, it's just something that just, it doesn't connect for whatever reason. It just, the lyrics go through. But what I love about this is uh, you're giving different tools that people can use. So the first one was BPM. 
you know, upper beat will make you feel more energetic. A, a slower BPM will help you feel a little more relaxed. The second is the actual lyrics of the song. If they're more aggressive, you'll be more aggressive, more grateful, you'll be more great. Like, thank you, Dido is not just how slow it is, it's the lyrics and the message. Are there other things? This is why I love it, like the science. Are there other things? So BPM, lyrics, what else am I paying attention to to try to create the ideal mindset shift? Yeah, so here for me is the biggest one and okay, and there's not necessarily science behind it. So it's great to have the science to plug in, but I also feel that science is catching up to spirituality and things that we've known for thousands of years. You know, like the chanting of Ohm is now being studied and it's showed to in the brain with fMRI studies that it actually activates the part of the brain that's connected to peacefulness, for example. Okay. We've known this, right, for thousands of years. But now it's validated and I can present it in medical conferences to doctors and they understand it more because it's validated. But the things that aren't validated doesn't mean it's not powerful. So when I'm listening to a piece of music and even if someone recommends it to me and says, this, this song has great science behind it. It's perfect beats per minute. It's been shown to do this or that. I listen to it and I ask myself two questions. One, does this make me feel expansive? Right? Like I'm standing on top of a mountain, my, my arms are wide open, which I'm going like this, right? And I have a feeling of freedom. It makes me feel free and unencumbered. Or does it make me feel contracted? You know, like I want to close up. I don't feel safe. It sounds like, you know, nails on a, on a board for me. So regardless of someone recommending it to you, just like medicine, the most powerful medicine we can create is individualized medicine. You know, Broccoli might be great for me, but you might be allergic to it. How does it make you feel when you put it in your system? And it's the same with music. Most of us think that music is something that happens to us, but it's also something that's happening in us. And so if we can connect with that and saying, how does this make me feel internally when I hear it? And you say, wow, I love this song. Every time I listen to that Selena song, you know, it puts me in a state where I just feel like I'm in flow. I don't have to think. I can get out of my mind chatter and I'm like in creation like that. That's an expansive state for you. And you want to be able to go back to that. So that's the key, contracted or expansive when you're listening to it. And then you start to, you kind of start to see patterns of what you like and what you don't at this point in your life. You know, it might change in a month. And that's the thing. You have to keep checking in with yourself and re-listening and re-asking yourself how you feel. It's all about awareness. So, so give us a toolkit, right? So the only tools, I, I'm doing that and I love it. Uh, how does the song make me feel? I like it, great. I'm gonna have it on repeat for as long as I like it. Uh, that also then leads me to, hey, maybe I'll like other songs. Uh, what, what else has Selena Gomez sung, right? So that kind of goes down that path or YouTube has recommended for this song, listen to th these songs. But I'm wondering if there's a more, beyond just the, how it makes me feel is there is there a way to get there to discover better songs for the moves we want to give us a instead of having to listen to everything so you know selena if you said hey it's um 80 beats per minute that already gives me something to to classify hey let me find other songs that are 80 beats per minute if her her lyrics are about its relationship and her dilemma i don't even know what she's talking about so that's not impacting me but for other people if it's more aspiration or positive lyrics are there other is it instrumental versus not is it i mean are there other things that you could break down a song that lead to the how does it make me feel so to make finding other songs a little easier yeah and also i think one of the great things about finding finding songs is that when you start to create your your initial playlist right so if you just look at your inventory now and didn't worry about it and instead of saying, oh, I'm looking for gratitude, right? Just go through your playlist and start playing songs and then write down how they make you feel for each one. Then start to sort them into playlists so you could navigate them. But another thing to do is create a movement with it. You know, like you and I are talking about it on this talk. Now, if you have a thousand listeners all listening to this and we start posting, hey, this is what I listen to for gratitude. This is what I like to listen to when I work out. This is what I like to listen to when I'm trying to get inspired or motivated. This is what I listen to when I'm doing breathing techniques. Then, you know, we can pull from each other's and try different things because obviously we're at this great time 
where our technologies are giving us the ability to go check it out. YouTube, Spotify, Apple, you sh Amazon, you should be able to find whatever songs people are posting and check them out. The other thing I think is, is just some rules of thumb is create a program with it. And just like everything else, when you create a program and you give it consistency, it's going to have more of a transformational effect. So start out just like you would creating um, a, a new nourishment program or a new diet. Just start out with the basics, you know, three times a day. Start, give yourself nourishment in the morning, musical nourishment, I call it. So just like you break your fast of what you're eating. What song, one song, just start with, do you want to start your day with today? And then as your day unfolds, if you set your intention with that, and now you see some challenges coming into your day and you start to get out of that space that you were in. Again, where am I now? Where do I want to go? What piece of music is going to take me there? But I think in midday, revitalizing your energy and I, uh, with a song that takes you someplace else in the world, I call it a five minute musical vacation, is just a great practice to do because it exposes you to the culture of different music all around the world. It creates great conversation. It educates you and it takes you out of your environment that you're currently in. And if you just close your eyes with it, or for you, if you're visual, you, wanna, you might want to see a video that takes you to Jamaica and there's guys jamming, you know, and playing reggae music with it. And then third, listen to that piece of music at night that's going to wind you down. I think of it like uh, in the evening, you have a, a sweet tooth for something, something that's like dessert for you sonically. And start with those three things and do it for a month. And you'll start to know yourself a lot more. Wow, this song doesn't work for me now. And keep adjusting and watch what happens after a month for you in terms of becoming the DJ of your life. You're going to be able to navigate your energy more. Take the 30-day Sonic Berry Challenge. That's it. Like it. Let's go. Absolutely. Cool. Well, dude, I, you know, I could talk to you all day, but for people who want to uh, dive deeper in your world, learn more about what you do what, where do you want them to go where are we sending them yeah just set, go to barrygoldsteinmusic.com you can find me on most platforms i'm also doing a, uh, involved in a great summit that's the uh, sound healing summit that's going on from august 9th to 13th that's on my instagram page and linked in my link tree so if you want to know more about music sound and vibration and dive deeper in it's something great to go to and listen to my music i love talking about it but there's nothing, you know, we could talk about music all day, but it's all about listening and experiencing it. And I also have a book, uh, so I'll give you a, a, a mindless plug here. It's called The Secret Language of the Heart. I also have Evan's book here with me as, there it as is. well. So it's cool. all good. I love talking. Well, to you. I appreciate the time, man. And listen, I took notes. I don't usually pull up my laptop on a, on a IG Live because I don't want to be disrespectful. It's like, I've got to write this down or I'm going to forget it. So I'm, I'm sending it to myself. Appreciate everything you put out and do it, it's healing. And I love that you're stepping up and, and speaking at events and being more visible and saying yes to being a talker. And I love it. And, and thank you for joining us today and can't wait to see you at the next meeting. My pleasure. Thanks again, Evan. And thank Much you for love. all that you're doing in the world. Really appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks, Barry. Cheers. All right. Bye-bye.